So I'm at the studio today. I have to shoot some content and also have a few meetings. So we're gonna get to it. I just love having a space that I could come to to work, to get things done like outside of my home. I think that's really important, especially when you, you're an entrepreneur um, and it's kind of like you've had that work from home kind of thing. It can be a bit overwhelming to live and work in the same space and really create those boundaries for you and have like a healthy work-life balance. This is like such a, such a blessing and our goal obviously is to rent it out for creators here in New York to be able to come shoot their content. I just know how pivotal having a quiet space was to get things done and I'm just happy that we have something that we can provide to our community. We don't really have anything new, any new front. Oh yeah, we, our table came, it's a cute marble table. Got this chair. The marble table there. We're still waiting for article. We got like these colorful chairs from article. So they're supposed to come next week. So these are like the screens, uh, like privacy screens. We're gonna glue some soundproofing like cushion on that. So that's gonna be for our podcasting area. So that, I hate that fan. Here's the bathroom. We gotta get a shower in <laughs> at this point, but this will be a great place to shoot like shower content, hair content, uh, skincare routines. This is the main like studio. We set up our salvage paper. And yeah, this is where I've been shooting my YouTube videos. This is where also our photo studio, you know, you're running out to shoot things. The podcast office area. Yeah, so we're gonna have like the screens around the couch and all that kind of stuff. Super, super, super cute. So we're still kind of like designing it, but at the same time, we're still utilizing it for like our personal stuff. Um, but now that the backdrop is hung, I think we'll really be able to rent it out moving forward. So the agenda for today, um, just to run down, we're gonna interview, have an interview with uh, gonna join us on the call. Some really great ideas as far as like the challenges and stuff. So we're gonna start mapping out the challenges so at least we know what we're gonna need. I am rushing so much. I have a panel to do at Ludlow House with kicks. I think I was telling you guys yesterday, but I don't know how I feel about this. Like, this is the look. You know, it's like cute summary, wrapping the brand, it's giving labels, you're giving sneakers, you're giving girly, you're giving streetwear. You are an influencer for lack of a better word, but you are a legend, a stylist, a legend, a creative queen. Like you're doing all these things that are really impacting culture. Now when it comes to like hype sneakers, do you feel like it's your role to kind of follow the trends in terms of like, oh, oh shit, everybody's wearing off white. I need to make that look better. Or when everyone sways, is that the signal to like go in an opposite direction and kind of set the tone in a new way? I think the key, well, the key for me is just really staying true to who I am and not being so swayed. So there are super hype sneakers that I'm gonna love, but then there are still super hype sneakers that I hate. And sometimes I do have to catch myself and be like, oh, this isn't you, that you don't like these. You know, like your audience might say, you know, we would love to see you how, you how you style it or things of that nature, but at the same time, she's like, well, this I wouldn't wear this on a regular day, so I'm not gonna wear it just for content sake. And so I think the perspective that I come from, I'm from New York, and so sneaker culture is New York. You know, it started here, that's what I would say. Um, and so I was an athlete, and all these things are, they play in the role that sneakers play in my life. So it's very personal for me. And so I wouldn't consider myself like a sneakerhead, more like an enthusiast. I love fashion, but like, I like sneakers, you know, and that's kind of like my way in fashion is through sneakers. Day two of release day. I'm getting ready to head to Adane Bookstore, which is a black owned bookstore. It's owned by one of the sisters that own uh, William Uppo. So my friend Sky is doing like a panel. She has a podcast all about books. Check it out, long story short. So I'm heading there now. I'm actually like late, but we're gonna get there. So here's today's outfit. Like I mentioned, this is day two of the release. I'm just like challenging myself to just wear the shirt every single day. It's not that much of a challenge because the shirt is like super versatile. Any like vintage t-shirt or graphic shirt can be really versatile. You can wear it in a variety of different ways and I really just wanna highlight that. I do the most for these brands. Like, I mean, I, I give a lot to these brands, so like, why wouldn't I do the same for myself when it comes to content? So, I really, really love this outfit. These, from, these are Gucci. The sweat shorts are from Everlane shirt, obviously, me, Times Visionary Society. And the over shirt is from Aritzia. Hat is Balenciaga. And then as far as bag, 
I, I think I just want to keep it very like this is definitely giving like Saturday at the country club so I kind of just want to just throw on like a nice little tote and just keep it chill like that this one says defend black womanhood I actually got this from Adane the last time I was there but check out 50 say hi he is maturing into such a good grown man like he is so well behaved and mild mannered now definitely not as wild as he used to be are you at least gonna say hi to the people okay <laughs> much of our healing happens with that which means that there's so much more on the line mm -hmm. like when those relationships don't feel good right. it hurts when you have friendship breakups like it's, it can be devastating it's a because death. there's it mm -hmm. is it really it really requires mourning and so it should require us to put just as much effort into maintaining them. I had a freshman break up and it hurt. Mm -hmm. It hurt really, really bad. And I didn't think I could experience that pain outside of a romantic relationship and a family member. And um, I'm working on that day. But it, I noticed that a piece of me left because that was like my ride died. Like mm -hmm. if I wanted to go to the coffee shop, she's like, right, thank you guys for coming out. Shout out to Shout out to everything that's at the table right now. Every yeah, endeavor right. everybody's that's working on. Money is in the future. I wish everybody the courage and focus to continue to do what we're doing. This new sneaker subscription based sneaker service you know, I've been loving it honestly so I've been I'm partnering with them for a long-term partnership um, yeah and that's honestly what it's really all about is aligning with brands that really speak to your ethos and your ideals um, I've never thought that reigning sneakers would ever be a thing <laughs> Um, but when you come from a sustainability standpoint and that perspective, it's just like that's a lot better for the environment. Um, I mean, just a lot better for your consumption, not even necessarily for, an, for the environment. I think at this point, it has to be a personal choice to just live, live less. <laughs> not less bad, but just consume less because with these billion dollar corporations just doing nothing will damage, they're the ones damaging the environment and they place the blame on individuals to, to, to find a cure or to, you know, they putting it on us. No, oh, it's these big corporations. They're the ones that are affecting climate, you know, they are. So they need to do the work. And so I think, but from a personal standpoint, it's just like, you have to just want you just have to want that for yourself in general.